busy day today, but first we'll start with a health warning. This video was taken without using a tripod. It makes it much easier to follow the boat when it's going at a decent pace, but the penalty is camera shake. So if you start to feel car sick, please go and watch something else. Anyway, the plan was to test a new system for adjusting the rudder rake, assess the flotation of the boat with the winch now moved forward of the mast, and try out a number of different foil configurations. Weather forecast was for a reasonable breeze, albeit from the worst possible direction. Started off with the number 2 rig up and the normal foils. These foils are the slimmest that we've made to date and are working well in light winds, but the downside is that the boat is skidding to leeward more when sailing upwind. This is a good thing for foiling as it can make the windward foil bite and hold down the boat, and it also depowers the rig when hard pressed, but could be a challenge when beating to windward in a fleet of boats. The wind eased a bit so I put up the one minus rig. This is so called because it is only 4cm shorter in the luff compared to the number one, but it has a smaller jib. This made the boat a lot more lively and I'm surprised how well the boat can cope with this rig. When drawing the rigs for the boat I could not put a full size Mini 40 rig on it as it simply looked ridiculous, yet these smaller rigs look disproportionately large anyway. Come what may, I need to sail next weekend with the number one rig just to see what it looks like. When we designed the modifications of, to our box 1 meter, so called because we wanted a boat would, that would fit inside a box measuring 1 meter by 1 meter for ease of transport, the idea of the gantry was simply to push the rudder and foils further apart and so increase stability when foiling. But there's a fine line between increased stability versus extra difficulty in tacking since we've messed about with the balance of the boat, but this gantry appears to be about the right length and good compromise. What I had not appreciated though was just how much easier it is to adjust or remove the rudder when all the fittings are external. I really like this change. So time for a change and add the centerboard, retaining the number one minus rig. I've never sailed with this configuration so I was interested to see what happened. It's immediately more sensitive to steering adjustments and much more positive. The centerboard must be reducing the lateral loads on the foils too which could help eliminate ventilation problems. Not surprisingly the boat tracks as if it's on rails with the addition of the centerboard but I am a bit skeptical about the benefits of having so many appendages in the water. One thing that is apparent is the boat is riding quite high when foiling, so perhaps the foils are too long. Lowering the boat in the water would also have the benefit of adding stability as the distance between the foils where they enter the water will be greater. It's a case of whether or not to get the saw out and chop 2cm off the bottom, but I am a bit worried that Dave will kill me if I mess up his foils. Compared to the longer and wider Mini 40, this is a far more sensitive boat in that it will foil much earlier as the wind increases, but it is also susceptible to crashing off the foils when overpowered if not sailed well. But this is the fun of the boat, as you need to be trimming the sails all the time to get the most out of it. I'm pleased to be able to say that the boat has not yet shown its signs of pitch poling, even during one of these crash landings, which is most encouraging. The small foils need careful trimming to reduce the angle of attack right down to the minimum required to get lift. Any extra lift causes ventilation to occur. I have now found that once the boat is up on its foils I need to reduce the attack of the rudder T-foil and give the boat nose down attitude thus reducing the lift from the foils.
Next, changed over to the mini foils on the end of deeper vertical fins. The intent here is to convert the boat into a foil assisted mode to stop the lee hull from burying but not provide enough lift to get the boat airborne and also increase resistance to leeway when sailing upwind. It's all scientifically calculated of course, making the foils the same size as the area of foil it uses when foiling at speed. As far as we can tell from looking at photos anyway. So just in case you had not already sussed out our development program, it's all get just guesswork. The trials today look promising, but not a lot of video here for you to see since it's all pretty uneventful. What I was looking for was to see if the lee float submerges, and in the wind strengths today it did not, and at times showed encouraging speed. And might well be the preferred option over a centerboard plus normal foils configuration when it comes to racing around a conventional course. So enough of that. After lunch it was back to normal foils and have some more fun. Still with the one minus rig up, though the wind was soon increasing, making it quite a challenge. You might have noticed from how the boat sometimes changes course quickly, just how much the wind swirls around on this lake when it's coming from the northeast, coming down the man-made channels and joining together off our little promontory. Unfortunately, I don't often get an onshore breeze. Personally, I'm very pleased with the speed that the boat is showing on only its second outing. And it is well mannered too, carrying this relatively large rig in stronger winds than I expected it to be able to cope with. Its tendency to crash off the foils is only occurring when it is suddenly hard pressed in a gust. And to combat this you need to play the sheets and also adopt a slightly bow down attitude by trimming the rudder rake using the second servo on board the boat to knock off a bit of lift from the foils. By now you're probably wondering how long this video is going to go on for. I know that you're meant to make this type of clip less than 5 minutes long and I had considered splitting it into two, but figured this would separate those who stumbled on the video by mistake from those who are genuinely interested in RC multi-hulls. So if you're still watching, you're a multi-hull nutcase like me. One of the doubts I had when coming up with this new configuration for the boat was it might be susceptible to a capsize over the lee bow when hit by a gust, when moving slowly and the foils were not working effectively, and is relying on the comparatively narrow beam of the boat and the small volume of the floats. However, as you can see from this video, there are no signs of this happening whatsoever, which is good news. The wind continued to increase and I was going to put the number 3 rig up, but poor workmanship on my part earlier in the week resulted in a shroud pulling off the mast as soon as I had it rigged, so I had to jump down to the number 4 rig, a rig that I'd anticipated would be too small for today's wind strength, and almost did not bring it with me, but was surprised to see the boat performing well. So much so that I'm wondering if I might need a smaller rig for really strong days. It is interesting to see the boat foiling on virtually an upwind leg here, and this is very encouraging. I think that the foiling must be happening because the centre of effort of the rig is now so low with the number 4 rig that the healing moment has reduced to an amount that does not negate the lift from the foils, and this is the best upwind foiling that I have achieved with these boats, so more good news for me.
That hop and a skip of the boat was probably the fastest that I've yet achieved, but somehow I don't think it would count as a new top speed even if I'd had the GPS tracker on board. It was hardly sailing and was definitely not under control. So there you have it, great fun at the lake again, very pleasing to see the boat go foiling so well from the word go, and no capsizes or breakages today. Tempting fate to saying this, but what could be better than that? <laughs>